Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine McCoy and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thank you for clicking in to drop by, but if you are a returner, it is always nice to have you back. This video, I am going to be doing a pre and a post reflection of my first time in the anatomy lab. And just as a content warning, because I literally just said anatomy lab, that does mean I am going to be talking about people who have passed away. And for some people, that might be a little bit emotional. That might be something that you might want to leave this video, or you might need to pause and come back to it later. So content warning, I will be talking about people who have passed away and observing their bodies and working with their bodies for my medical school education. And if you are still here and you're not yet subscribed, let me help you out with that. You're going to take your finger, your cursor, whatever it might be, you will go to the bottom right hand corner where there is a big red button that says subscribe. You will click that, turn on notifications, and you will be notified of all the future videos that I will make as I go on my medical school journey. Now that we have all of those things out the way, let's talk and give a little bit of context for what's about to happen. Yesterday, we had our professor of anatomy come in and talk to us about the fact that tomorrow, which is today, we are going to be entering the anatomy lab for the first time to meet our donors. Donors is the word that we use for the bodies of the people that have passed that have donated their body to science for the education of pre-health students. And it's also going to be the first time that I am meeting my anatomy group, which I will be working with for the next two years. And we will be able to create our own uh, group name, which for most people, they use their group name to be a pun, specifically an anatomy pun. And I have not yet thought of one, but uh, by the time this video comes out, we will already have the name of our uh, group. But if you have any suggestions, you can put those in the comments and I will read them in the next video that I do. So if you have any good anatomy puns, put those in the comments. And those are the two, three big things that we're doing today. Meeting some donors, meeting our groups, coming up with group names. During the presentation, they talked to us about what information we can expect to know about our donors. We'll get a first name, we will get an age, and we will also get a cause of passing. So those are the things that we will be able to know and use to identify our donors. Next year, we will be having a donor memorial celebration, and that is going to include some of the family members of the donors who are going to be able to come in and see what it is that their family member's donation has benefited which is our med medical education. And we'll, as the students, be able to thank the family of the donor for the opportunity to work with their family member. And that is something that I am going to be emailing the anatomy professor that I want to be a part of, because that's a very big commitment for someone to make when they are passing or before they're passing that they want their body to be donated to medicine. So. The last part of this presentation they gave us yesterday was that they wanted us to do a reflection. I'm going to be answering those reflection questions with you and sharing them because this is a very big milestone in my, um, in my learning. I am no longer a pre-health student that has had a couple of different dissections before now. Like I have done a frog dissection. Everyone does that in high school. I've done a cat dissection in high school. And at a summer camp, I did a cow eye, heart, and brain dissection. And I think also there was a cow liver in there somewhere, I think. So I've done six dissections, but that was all as a pre-health student. Now I'm going to be doing not dissections, but prosections. The dissections are done by the PT students, they're going to be the ones that open up and expose what it is that we, the medical students, will look at. But now I'm a medical student. I am going to be working with a 
donor that has my same body that is going to be representative of the body that I will work with as a physician. Like this isn't just a cow. This isn't just a frog. This isn't just a cat. This is another human. And it's a very big, um, it's a very big difference. Obviously, you've seen a frog, you've seen a cat, you've seen a human, but it is a very big emotional, psychological difference. And I feel like that's why they wanted us to answer some of these questions. So let's get into the questions that they have asked us to answer for my pre-anatomy lab reflection. First question, I will see, I will see the body of someone who has donated their body after they've passed to medicine. That is a very selfless decision to make. And it's also a lot of emotion because this is another human body that has passed. And I don't know how it is for you, but for me, the only time that I see human bodies that have passed in real life, not talking about movies, TV shows, nothing like that. But the only real times that you see people who have passed is at funerals. And it's always sad. And that is something that I'm wrestling with because this isn't necessarily sad. This is just a part of my education. This is a part of learning. But for someone else, this donor is their uncle, their grandfather, their mother. And for me, they're a part of my education, which is a very big thing to wrestle with. And I know that I'm an emotional person. But I'm also thankful for this opportunity. I will feel in, in parentheses, it says emotionally. You all probably already saw earlier in this video, I am a little emotional talking about this because it's a lot. On one hand, I am feeling sad because the donor is coming to us after having lived a full life. They have created memories, relationships, a legacy, and here they are in our anatomy lab, lying on a table, having passed away. On the other hand, it is exciting because even after passing away, the donor is still able to be a part of our world. And you can do some pretty amazing things after passing away. You can turn yourself into a record to play music. You can turn yourself into a diamond for someone to wear in a ring or as a part of jewelry. You can also turn yourself into a pod and be a part of planting a tree. So there are many ways for your body to live on after death. The donors have taken it to the max. They have decided, I don't need my body. Give it to science. Give it to medical education. And I am so thankful that they have done that for us. I do get very emotional very easily. Getting all these emotions out before going to the anatomy lab is very good because I don't want to be doing this in, in the anatomy lab. And the last question of the reflection is I will think. I will think about how thankful I am to the donors and how their donation is going to benefit not just us, the students working with their donations, but it's also going to benefit the people that we will work with as physicians. Because of their donation, they're not just directly helping us, the students. They are also indirectly helping every single person that we will help as physicians in the future. And that is powerful. So now I have a little bit of time before actually going to the anatomy lab and doing a little post reflection. But yeah, the next time you see me, it will be after I have gone to anatomy lab.
now from later in the day, I have finished my anatomy lab and they did not give us any specific questions to answer, but they did encourage us to reflect. So reflecting starts now. The actual viewing of the donors, oh, actually no. Before we get to that, let's get to something very light, fluffy, easy. So we had to name our groups. The group name that mine chose was the Scleras Tour. So sclera, it's a part of the eye. And it's a play on the Eras Tour for um, Taylor Swift. And the anatomy professor loves Taylor Swift, so we knew that she would like our group name. Now, getting into the actual, uh, like, really most important thing about anatomy lab, the viewing of the donors. Also, content warning, I am going to be talking about the donors' bodies and the experience of viewing them. So if that is something that you don't want to see, you can click away. If that's something that you need time to prepare yourself for, you can pause the video, come back later. That is perfectly fine. It's not going to be too explicit. It's more so going to be my reflections on seeing the bodies. So they had two donors for us, not going to give any kind of identifying information. Uh, so patient X, I mean, donor X and donor Y, we're looking at them and we are able to touch them. So everyone is just like, not at, not all at first, but the anatomy professor says, you all can come up, you can touch them, you can touch the donors. And one of the donors had had um, the top part of their skull opened and the brain removed because the, um, the PT students had done something last week where they had to literally take it off. So I walk up to the table that they have one of the donors laying on, and then suddenly I'm looking into a human skull. And I was like, whoa, okay, because I couldn't see it from the way that the lip of the table was covering it. But I walk up, and suddenly I'm looking into a skull. And it's like, hmm, this is really cool. I've never been able to do that before. But also, whoa, was not expecting that. Um, then you look at the, um, the donor body, you know, when you go to a funeral and you see the person and they look pretty much like they're sleeping, that is not the same type of condition that the donors were in. They looked a little bit closer to mummies, obviously not the same way that mummies look when you go to a museum, but they definitely didn't look like they're just sleeping. There were obvious differences from the embalming process and the formaldehyde that had preserved their bodies. As I said, we've been encouraged to touch, so I reached out, and one thing I wanted to see was how the cartilage feels. So I touched one of the donor's ears. It was very firm. I touched their nose, also very firm, and that's part of what you expect after they've been preserved, but it was interesting feeling it because it has some element of softness to it, but it's much firmer than what you would think. And then, yeah, I was able to look at both of our donors' bodies, two very different bodies, but at the same time, they are going to show us and help us as medical students be educated on what normal anatomy is. So yeah, it was very fun. I was a lot calmer in the moment of looking at the bodies than I was and I feel like that's because I took the time to sort through some of those emotions and thoughts before, which was very helpful, at least for me. So by the time I was looking, I was able to fully appreciate what it is that I was seeing. And it was a beautiful moment. I'm definitely going to enjoy the anatomy lab. I'm going to love my group members and we're going to have a good time. So obviously, no filming inside of the anatomy lab, HIPAA. Um, also, that would be a very big violation of the YouTube guidelines if I showed anything from the anatomy lab here. If you like this video and you're still watching, make sure that you like the video. You give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can put those in the comments. If you have any suggestions, 
of things I should do, things I should ask about, put those in the comments. I read all of them. And thank you very, very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.